I guess I'll start with the introduction. So I'm here live from Porto, from the in real life boot camp. Uh, they've been building the last few days here. It's quite exciting to see. Um, and today I'm going to talk about Madoka packages and testing. But first, introduction for the people who I previously did a talk on variants and better matching earlier this week. Um, but I've been involved in the ecosystem for about two years now. And I mainly built packages for Motoko, uh, which can be found on the Aviate Labs organization. Um, and you can also find me on socials, GitHub, Twitter, and Discord uh, through uh the links there um another thing if you want to follow along for the coming week i'm gonna host the slides on motoko.academy so you can find everything there and copy paste any code you see on the slides um so yeah let's get started first of all um so like the title said motoko packages and testing um, first, I'm going to introduce what a Motoko package actually is. So the Motoko compiler has some restrictions on how you can import files. Um, and I'm going to walk over it. So you're sure that if you cannot find something, you know why that is. Another thing is we've by now two Motoko package managers. One is Vessel, the other is Mops. Um, Vessel was built by Definity themselves, and I'm going to do a small introduction on how to use it. And then at the end, I'm going to touch briefly on testing, uh, mainly how to test packages. So not end-to-end -end tests of your entire dApp, but I also show some links where you can find inspiration on how to do so. So first, um, if we talk about packages, uh, Motoko describes them as a module. A module is basically just one file with either types, functions, uh, classes in them. And you can just import them locally. Let's say you have a file structure, you have multiple files. You can just import, for example, module one. It's in the same directory. You can also like go back a directory and find them there. Uh, and also, of course, any other way you're used to use the file system itself. Um, but yeah, this is pretty easy and straightforward. I think everyone figured this out. Uh, another one is importing module from a package. I think most of you are already using the base library since DFX, basically, if you built a Motoko vector, um, it's going to include the dependency for you. So you can make use of it. Um, in the example here, so line one is pretty straightforward. And line two, you might think, what's that? So um, a few days ago, I talked about better matching. And it's something you actually also can do by using a selective import. So let's say I have actually the package array, and I just only want to import the function map I can do so with this notation. So in between the brackets, the names, and then the equals. Um, I think there are typos here. This has to be a semicolon. Um, another one is you can rename. So if you have a conflict locally, you can just rename the functions easily this way. Um, so a thing I have seen happen this week here live in Porto, when people were working and building, is they're trying to import a type with this selective notation. And this is not gonna work since it's not exposed by default. So if you want to import types this way, you actually have just to import a whole package with just the simple naming convention and then um, just use a dot notation to get it. Uh, by the way, you might already know, but it doesn't matter how you name this. So this is the path and the name you give it, you can choose yourself. So there's no limitations there. So, okay, you might be used to using them, but like, how do you, how do you actually make or create a package? 
Um, so let's say we are creating this module, this package, which basically does uh, returns the smallest number of the two you pass into it, which is fairly straightforward. But the thing you can see, you first, I'm going. I want to talk about field visibility. So like you can see here, it's public. This is pretty important since if you don't use public, it's not going to be usable outside of the module itself. So if you don't put anything by default, it's going to be private. So it's only going to be usable within the module. If it's public, you also can like address it outside. Um, there's also other um, keywords like system, but I think that's already covered in another lecture. So I'm not going to do that here. Uh, so if you're making packages and it's saying, oh, the, the, the type doesn't exist, make sure you have public before uh, your type definition or your function. So how to create packages with Vessel especially. So how Vessel works behind the scenes is it's going to look for a source folder uh, or directory in your uh, um your project or your GitHub directory. Um, so the example above is actually a bad one since Vessel is not going to find the net.mo file we just created. It expects actually it to be in the source folder. So a better example would be have this structure in a package. Since now Vessel is going to find not, it's also going to find the int. So an additional trick you can use if if you use a, a lib.mo naming convention you can actually import it just by using the, the name of the directory above it um, so yeah testing I'm going to touch on later but basically this is how Vessel expects your packages to be formatted which is quite important if you want to create one who's importable by Vessel itself um, so installing Vessel, I think it's by now pretty well documented. So if you just go this, to this link, you can download it. So basically you go to releases, you download the binary for your operating system. So for Linux, it's going to be called Vessel Linux. And then what you have to do is open a terminal, navigate to the directory where it was downloaded. And basically you need to give it make it executable so you can do that with this command and then you have to move the binary to somewhere on your path so if you want to learn more about what that actually means if you google this you're probably going to find a, enough information to get you started but basically a default path on linux for example is uh, in your home directory in the bin folder you can just store it there and move it there and that will be fine. And you can check whether it's done correctly. If you do which vessel, it's just, it should return the place where you moved it to. Another one to check is just, if you do that dash version, it should also print out the version to your terminal. But uh, this is for Mac. I just put it in the slides for people who are using it. It's pretty, the, pretty much the same, except the default path folder is a little different. Uh, but in the end, it doesn't really matter as long as your terminal can find it. So getting started with Vessel. Um, if you cannot follow along, I'm going to try after Q&A with time left to do a demo. So I'm just going to, I'm also going to run these commands along with, with you guys. Uh, so don't stress and you can always find the slides uh, on the URL below. So if you do... If you do the command vessel in it, it's going to create two files, one of which is vessel.dhal. And it's, it describes two things. One is your dependencies, which is just a list of names. And we're going to touch on what those, those names are later. And you can also define the compiler. So by default, non-text means there is no compiler specified, which also means that Vessel won't download the compiler for you. So that's basically that file. It's pretty straightforward. And so, of course, if you want to specify a specific compiler, since yesterday version 0.7.6 of Motoko came out, so 
you can just specify it this way. Um, now, the other file, it's a lot of text, but it's called package set.dhal. And basically what Vessel is going to give you by default at the top is it's going to give you the Definity package set. And this package set includes dependencies such as, as we see here, like base and matchers along others. So another part of the file uh, is this one. This is basically where you add any additional dependencies. Um, if you want to look how it works, uh, try to get a look at the AV Labs packages because they also have dependencies there themselves. So you probably file find a package set the dhal which has examples in there, and I think it's also pretty well documented on the GitHub organization itself. So basically, all you have to do is specify the name. So this is the name you're gonna use um, in here. Um, specify the version. So this is what it's going to look for on GitHub, for example. And you just have to put in the link and it's going to find it for you. A very important thing, if that repository has dependencies themselves, you have to add them manu manually too. Um, and basically what that happens uh, at the bottom here is just concatenating both all the packages from the package set and your additions and any overrides you made, basically. Um, another thing I saw this week that happened a lot is that the packages still couldn't be found. And this probably because you have to specify Vessel as your back tool in your DFX adjacent configuration. So basically just have to set back tool to Vessel sources. What Vessel Sources does is basically it generates flags for the Motoko compiler. So it knows where to find, for example, base is going to live in the dot vessel, which is the, the binary cache, basically of Vessel itself. And this is the path to where it lives. This is also where you can see why I previously hammered a lot on make sure you put everything in the source for, for uh, directory since it's going to at this by default at the end. Uh, so if you don't, it's not gonna find your files. So for Motoko package sets, you have one that's maintained by Definity themselves, but if you want, I also created one, but it only include, includes the packages I've written for Aviat Labs. So you can also find this one here. It's pretty easy. You can just import it and then you have don't have to manually configure your, um, your dependencies yourself. So it's quite neat to be, if you use both of them. Um, that's about it. Pretty straightforward. Um, so the last topic I wanted to touch on, I'm going pretty quick, it seems, but that's more time for a small demo. Uh, for testing uh, your, your packages itself, your modules, the easiest thing is basically using the interpreter. So you have three options to do this. Uh, one of them is that you download the Motoko compiler itself directly. And then you, if you, again, move it to your path somewhere, you can use a command like these, this to interpret the file. So it's going to try to to run it, but I'll give a demo later. Um, the second option is using DFX by default. It's go, it's being shipped with a certain version of the Motoko compiler. And if you also pass, of course, the flag that Vessel Sources normally does for you, if you put them with and then R to interpret the file, you can also do it that way. And then the last way, which is if you're using Vessel anyway, in my opinion, it's easiest. And this is probably also the thing you're going to see type in the terminal later is you can use Vessel to import a certain Motoko compiler. You can use it to generate a possibly long string of dependencies and interpret the file this way. So this is basically only possible with non-actor functions. So if you're creating an actor, um, the interpreter doesn't do anything since it, since it did nothing to execute. 
so this is only good to test modules. So if you split up your app in module mo multiple modules, you can test it this way. And it's way, way faster than deploying every time. So the second way of text testing is how most of you do probably. You set up uh, the FX, you deploy the canister, and then you do some kind of integration test. So either you, you run commands to DFX to call the canister, but there are also other options to, you can use the TypeScript actor and then TypeScript testing frameworks to do this. So I'm gonna give you links which you can check out yourself. I'm not gonna do the integration testing myself, but I have a few example repositories where I both do testing with TypeScript and even benchmarking canisters and things for uh, cycle cost and stuff. So those will be in the links later. Um, so Motoko testing libraries itself. So that's in combination with a Motoko interpreter. You have Motoko Matchers. This is something that's included by the uh, the Definity package set. Um, I created one, which is called testing.mo, which you can find here. Uh, Kyle Peacock, Peacock of the foundation also has experimented with this and you can find this repository here. Uh, so we we both take about the same approach, I think. Uh, but I'll show, I'll try to use this one later or at least show the repository. So this is actually already the end. So useful links, make sure to play around in the Motoko Playground since it's very user-friendly to experiment and test quick stuff. This is a link to Vessel. Um, this is more information on modules and imports. So on the internetcomputer.org website, there is quite a lot of information what the limitations are and how to use it. Um, here are another link like the testing library, how to test with, how to actually text, test your canisters with TypeScript and how to do cycle benchmarks. Those are examples of quite a while ago already, but they should be still up to date. Um, and that's it, what I want to say. So. I see nobody has asked any direct questions in q and I'll go over the chat. And otherwise I'm gonna do a quick demo of creating a package from start to end with, uh, with Vessel. Um, seems that there are no immediate questions. I guess it's weekend for everyone. Uh, and it's we're reaching the end of the bootcamp itself. So I am gonna uh, do a little demo to clarify. So like you can see, normally you can see my editor. So I've just had set up VS Code with a Motoko plugin that does some highlighting and stuff for me. And like I said before, for if we type in which vessel, you can see I have installed my vessel in this path. So I'm using vessel version 0.6.4, which is I think the latest. So if we go back to the slides, we can say, okay, let's just follow the guide. We just type vessel in it, pretty simple. And it's gonna create two files for us. At least it should if everything goes well. So one of them is this one. What I'm gonna do, I actually want to use the vessel to fix my Motoko version. So I'm going to use 0 0.7.6, which is the latest. And then in this file, I am gonna leave it as it is. So like you can see, it already imported the packets set for the latest versions itself. So it kind of makes sense to use it. And we're not going to use any additional dependencies. So measures I'm not going to use, so I can remove it, but the base library, for example, we can use. So to recap what I said before, we are we need to create a source library. And basically from here on out, everything will be imported by Vessel if you publish it somewhere. Um, so there are no limitations. So 
I had uh, NAT.mo previously. So let's look for the code and just copy paste it in here. So basically that's all we need for this. Um, so if I do make it not public and I want to import it somewhere, let's say I want to import net, which is on the, so you can either use this on the same level. It says like this directory, or you can just use this either is fine. But if I use, um, I want to, for example, say X is the minimum of one and two, um, it's gonna say it doesn't exist since it's gonna say, Hey, the module is empty. This is again, because we didn't put it in public. So now it's not gonna say it anymore. Ryan did a great job in improving the uh, plugin. So it's pretty usable now, but let's say I don't like this notation. A thing we could have done is just import it this way. So it's the other notation I showed you, which will also just work. But let's say, so I have this function. I want to test it somehow. So let's just remove this. Let's keep the directory clean. So we're gonna create a test directory and I'm gonna make a file net.test.mo. Of course, I have to import it. So I'm just gonna import min this way and it's gonna be in source net. So let's say I want to check Another thing that's interesting always to import is debug, which is in the base library. So now we can also see that Vessel includes it for us, uh, in which we can use basically debug, print, another way of course. Um, so test is just to use this notation again, which in my opinion, it makes the imports a little less clean, but it makes your codes more readable. So let's say I want to run this somehow. So most of you probably would include it in uh, an actor, deploy it and like toggle it to an endpoint. But here is where I wanted to show the, you can use the interpreter. So let's try. So basically we're gonna do this, but then on the test file. Uh, once a thing, um, so vessel, if you type vessel bin, it's going to return the path where it is. So it's currently, if you press enter, it's going to install the interpreter. It basically returns the path where it lives. So if you go in here, go in the bin folder, you can see mock is here. So mock is the Motoko compiler itself. And if you know some bash, you can basically say, I want to use vessel bin as a path and I want to execute the mock um, command line tool itself. And of course, if I press enter, it's just gonna open a live interpreter for me. So I can say, and then I can, again, I can play it. I'm not a lot of people know about it, but you can play it, play with it like this. Like you can say why uh, let y equals to x plus one. And of course you're gonna see y is one now. Um, but we're not gonna use this. It also has a flag called R, which is interpret. So let's say I want to do test.net. I want to run this one. And now it says, oh, oh, oh. Um, Yes, you have indeed, you have a Motoko REPL, which you can play around with. So for basic stuff, it's it's pretty nice to have it. Um, so we have an error, but like you can see, I this is not the complete command I showed in the slides. We're also using vessel sources. So what vessel sources does is basically gives you a list of where the packages live. So we still have to pass this to the compiler itself, and we can use the same uh, notation here. So if you do vessel sources right now, it actually printed test to my, my command line. So it's now we actually can start testing too. So 
let's say we want to write some simple unit tests. Let's say uh, x equal to zero or to one, y equals to two. Well, I kind of assume that if the minimum of x and y, of course, should be one, should be x. So if this is not x, uh, not equal to x, we can basically say uh, print um, test failed, for example. And if we do the command again, it's not gonna say it because it is it was equal to x. So it did fail. A thing I recommend in these kind of tests is you actually want to um, to stop testing the rest is you can use assert statements and just do an assert false. Um, and this is basically gonna exit if the test fails. So if we move this around, which means it's going to fail now. It's going to print. Uh, I know it's not going to move this around, of course, if we would check for why. It, say, it says test failed because it's going to return X by the, uh, because it's a lower value. And it's also going to gonna exit. So it's not going to execute anything that comes after this. Um, so this is not, not going to be printed because it already failed here. And this is basically the notion on which the um, the test libraries are built upon. So I can actually probably show you around to some of those. So for me, I would say this is the easiest way in combination with those testing libraries to actually test modules. The only limitation is if you actually have an actor, uh, it's gone, not going to work because the interpreter doesn't yeah it doesn't have anything to execute basically uh so let's see if i can open so the testing library here so this is one i wrote a while back by now and basically it uses the same thing like i described here so uh, the same notion but if we go to a test file so an example test Basically, I written a sort of suite in which you can write like you would do in Chai or Mocha, like testing cases. And it's gonna like print out a, a semi beautiful prompt which test failed and which didn't. So, um, are there any questions by now around like using the interpreter to actually? uh test modules um uh there is a question in q a could you define a stable error slash map in the module and try to access update it from another module by importing the module i had to put it in a main not mode because it always true errors um Let's see. So you mean if you have something like uh, like this? But this is not going to work, right? Because it's non-static. Um, so it only can you can only use constants. So I don't think what you refer is like a stable array of map. It's stable if it's static, meaning you cannot alter it. But that means you cannot exit it from outside either. So that's probably why you have to uh, put it into an actor. So in an actor, this would work. So if you, uh, instead of this, you have an actor, it's going to work. Uh, because now you can actually have non-static one, not non-static variables. So that's indeed a limitation in modules itself, but nothing is stopping me from uh defining one here right if i have flat i don't know a is far of net equal equal to an empty one nothing is stopping of doing this and the interpreter will still be able to run it and you can still like write units test on on this table 
uh, systems. You can, by the way, you can also do it with classes. The only limitation is you cannot do it with actors, which is quite nice. Um, is it possible to unload imported modules? I've, I'm not sure what you mean with unloading them. Are there only are there other modules beside mode.base, such for example, mode.net? So there are quite a few. So if you go to uh, Aviate Labs, uh, let me see if I exit this. So if we go to Aviate Labs, for example, I think there's about 30 packages here, 51 but not all of these you can see. So there are actually a lot of others. Another thing which you can just, in if you search on language uh, Motoko in just GitHub, you're going to get like a, 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 a huge list of other people who are building in Motoko and probably also other packages you can use. Um. Uh, what about form of verification? I actually haven't played around with the Viper stuff. I actually know that uh, if you go to Definity Motoko itself, there are instructions around it, but I actually have no idea where they live exactly. I know if we go to the R... Um, here there is an open issue about it so if you want to know more you you go to this repository and the latest it's it opened it was open two hours ago it's it describes the form of verification and how to semi use it and it has a lot of useful links so if you want to do this um So are there any other questions at this point? So from my point of view, if you understand how to use the interpreter, that's basically all I want to do to show people. Um, so yeah, if you can use this, I think uh, that's, that's enough to get started and write some unit tests so you don't have to do it uh, by deploying every time, which make it, makes it a little easier. Um, so yeah, I think if there are no any further questions, uh, this is the end of the lecture. I wish you all uh, yeah, a, a great time in the last few days to finish your DAO project. I'm looking forward to seeing the results. So, uh, and I hope to see some Motoko testing, of course. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao, ciao.